Uh, before we start, actually, um, this is the uh, hashtag, official hashtag for, for my talk. Um, this is uh, Dan Cederholm. Yeah, I'll just let you write that down quickly. Um, but uh, you know, I'm going to do something a little bit different because I don't know what I'm doing anymore um, when it comes to CSS. And before you run out of the building um, and ask why I'm here, um, you know, when I got asked to speak uh, here, first of all, thank you to Sylvan for for the invitation and uh, for being here, first time in Paris, love it. Um, you know, I, I thought about uh, the fact that I feel behind, I feel overwhelmed with um, the, way, the, the speed at which things are moving and how to keep up with it. Um, so I, I decided today to talk about what CSS has taught me over the last 20 years of using it um, and what I've learned from it. In some cases, it's things that have nothing to do with CSS at all. Um, but I owe where I am in my career to CSS and, and why I'm here today. Um, it hasn't all been rainbows. Um, like before CSS, I had hair. Okay, so um, it's been a lot of, you know, the browser bug era was just terrible. Um, I think the first, you got to start with some bad jokes, right? Uh, the first, <laughs> the first thing that CSS taught me is how to take risks and how to take action about, hey, this is, there's a better way to do something, even when it might be difficult. So I'm going to go way back to 2002, and the biggest watershed moment for me with CSS was the redesign of Wired News. Uh, back in, does anyone remember this? Uh, redesign of, okay, a few of you. Yeah, not very many though. See, this is just going way back. Oh, by the way, this 2000, try to find a screenshot of a website in 2002. This is how big it is, basically, uh, back then. Um, so we'll just enlarge a little bit. But um, this was a big deal because this was the first commercial website uh, launched with CSS for layout for everything. Uh, before that, it was all tables and spacer GIFs. And um, some of you might not even have had to do that, and you're lucky, believe me, because it was horrible. Uh, but this was a big deal. This was the first commercial site. It, it, when it launched, it kind of um, pushed everything forward. For me, it was like before Wired News and after Wired News. Um, and we have this, um, this article uh, from Jeffrey Zeldman to thank, uh, I think, for moving things forward. He wrote an article called To Hell With Bad Browsers on a list apart. And basically, it was like, look, we want to use CSS for layout. We want, to, we want to use it for more than just fonts and, and colors and that kind of stuff. And let's leave this lowly browser behind. At the time, this was Netscape 4, which uh, didn't support CSS other than for color and font and stuff. So it, it was kind of like drive a stake in the sand and say, look, we're going we're gonna to have to serve you not, basically HTML, and that's it. And then uh, you know, modern browsers will will uh, take care of it. So I, you know, at the time, we're, we're, a lot of us were dabbling with CSS as a way to get rid of font, font tags. Um, by the way, I, when I, I made this line, there's something wrong with this line. And someone gets a prize. Come up to me afterwards and see if you can tell me what's wrong with that line. And I'll give you a prize. Um, so at that time, uh, a couple months later, I went to my boss. I was working at Fast Company Magazine at the time. And I said, look, Wired just redesigned with CSS. Why don't, why don't we do that? We have very similar goals, very similar websites, very similar structure. Um, and my luckily, I had a boss that was, that was really, um, you know, he, he was great. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, so we, we ended up um, redesigning Fast Company with CSS in 2003. And that was a big moment. We took a leap. Um, Netscape 4 users hated us. Uh, luckily, there wasn't that many of them at the time. <laughs> uh, but it, it also, like, you know, it, 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 CSS forced me into this uh, writing and teaching about CSS. And that's another thing that it taught me, right? Um, so we're redesigning Fast Company. I'm blogging about it uh, on my blog. This is, this is an ancient, look at this thing. It's terrible. Uh, look at the type, it's just awful. But um, I'm, I'm blogging about everything, about everything I'm learning, I'm blogging about. And uh, I'm writing about it. And I'm not a writer, I dropped out of college, so I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm still, uh, I'm still sharing it though. I'm writing articles um, for a list apart about, this is crazy, this is an article about 
uh, faux columns. So at the time, we have two floated columns and you needed to uh, have a background image that repeated behind it in order to make it look like there was two equal height. I mean, it's, can you believe that we had to do this stuff? Uh, this, another article I did on a list of part about mountaintop corners where you're uh, hand drawing pixel edges for, for, to make rounded corners and then having to put those as background images in each, each side um, when well, now we just do that. I mean, it's, it's you know, I just, I'm sharing this so you guys know. It's, it's all a lot easier now, even though it seems like it's not. Um, but I mean, share what you're learning. I think this, this is the point I'm trying to make here. Um, you don't have to be an expert to share what you're doing and to teach. Um, because that's, I think that's the best time to, learn, to share what you're learning. Because you're, you're learning, you, you understand how a beginner might interpret it better than someone else. So I'm doing all this stuff and I, I ended up writing some books about CSS, this is, which I, I don't know how to write books. I mean, it, it, it happened, but, um, but it's because of, because of the fact that I shared all the stuff that I, I was learning at the time. Uh, that opened doors for me, uh, and I, I owe CSS to that. I started making, um, you know, in order to teach and give talks, I started making stupid fake websites like to PayPal. Um, this was like a, a network for to pay owners. Um, this is actually, <laughs> I made this when I had hair, now it's kind of ironic, but, um, <laughs> but I, I, I created this stuff to learn specific, to learn and teach specific parts of this uh, with CSS. Um, I started making icons and selling them, so uh, that was fun. At Foamy was a, it was a Twitter bot that allowed you to owe beer to people and it would keep track of who you owed beer to. Um, it's still out there, I think, somewhere. Uh, oh, there's a, there was a t-shirt for it. You always make a t-shirt, by the way. You have to make a t-shirt. Any product you create, make the t-shirt first, trust me. Um, doesn't matter if it's a real company or not. Make the t-shirt, pretend like it's a company. Um, we had a, I, I think I did the cork t-shirt before the even, this even existed. This was a wine uh, website, a social network for wine people that was later, later uh, acquired. And, and that was a whole CSS. I mean, everything, all these things I learned, CSS Odeo. I worked on uh, the CSS for Odeo, which was a podcasting uh, site before podcasting was, was even a word. And then... Apple came out with podcasts and basically killed the company. Uh, but out of that group came Twitter. Uh, this is the same group that made Odeo made Twitter. And um, a little side note, I can remember the, working with the guys at Odeo, Evan Williams and, and Jack Dorsey was actually an intern at Twitter. Um, but anyway, so I get this email, hey, we're not doing Odeo anymore. We're doing this TWTTR thing. And do you want to design it? And I'm like, no, I'm busy. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it looked ridiculous. It was not that that's why I turned it down, but the, the font and everything. Anyway, so there's a lesson there. Always say yes. <laughs> Rolio was another one. Is, uh, I'm showing you these things, and I'm in my head. I'm like, I remember tr you know, the, the rounded corners and the boxes, and this is all like difficult to do back then. Um, ESPN search, um, Instapaper, um, and there, all these things have one thing in common. The things I just showed you um, is that they're they're uh, they're all gone. Oops, I skipped ahead there. They're all gone. They all don't exist anymore. All that code and all those like I don't know all those uh, all those stressful nights trying to figure out things and meetings about how important this was to the company and we're going to change the world with toupees or whatever. But, I, you know, all of it's gone and it's because it's all pixels. And I, at first I got really depressed about that because so much work went into those. Um, and then I, I started realizing that, you know, it, another thing CSS taught me, right? Be okay with the fact that this stuff's temporary because it's good to remember that. Um, and... The stuff's gonna go away, we're gonna improve our skills, and um, it's gonna be better tomorrow. So that's something that taught me. It also taught me how to run a business. 
And uh, I was doing freelancing for a long time because of CSS, but um, started uh, a site called Dribble. Uh, and, and Dribble users out there? A few of you? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, quite a few. Um, so Dribble is uh, a network for designers to share what they're working on. Uh, it's been out for about 10 years now, um, going strong. Uh, but it started as a side project. Uh, me and my friend Rich Thornett started this, this business, not as a business, as a side project. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, and it grew into a company. Uh, it was me as the sole designer there with doing all the front end. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a learning experience because I went from, yeah, this would be cool to, to build this and all the CSS I could do with it. And now it's like we're, I'm running payroll and things, which is, which is, is crazy. Um, and there's, there's a difference, there's a big difference between doing freelance projects as I was doing before Dribble, where each project I could, I could start and finish and then be done with it and move on. And that next project, uh, I could completely reinvent my tool set. I could learn new things in CSS and apply those to the next project and then so on and so forth. And so each project you know, got better and better as I moved on. Now, with a single product like Dribble, this is going on for 10 years now, um, I don't have that luxury, right? So I'm, we're iterating slowly over time, and uh, the code base gets, gets a little shabby, and it gets a little old, and it gets a little, um, you know, it's not the latest and greatest. And, and so you kind of have to, you have to be okay with living with your own code. And, and uh, you know, at first, I'm, I'm jamming everything into one CSS file for Dribble because it's just me, and the structure's kind of in my head, and, and that's okay. You know, later, it's, we're breaking it into files, and um, I'm going to get into that in a second. But, I mean, I, I had to embrace the imperfectness of the code, and I had to say, it's okay, we're not using the latest and greatest. That's fine. Um, what matters is the business right now. So, side projects are key for keeping your skills sharp, right? I mean, um, because those side projects can be places where you can experiment with all the stuff that you're learning today, for instance. Um, it's, a, it's a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, my latest one is Adventure Supply Company. Shameless plug here. Actually has nothing to do with CSS, so I'll skip. <laughs> Let's get, I think I just broke a rule, too, by showing that slide. Um, but uh, so I want to share um, also how CSS it sort of taught me how to be less stubborn and be less set in my ways. And I'm going to use specifically SAS as an example of that. So SAS, uh, I it was very reluctant to SAS initially. How many SAS users in the house? Yeah, right. I mean, it's crazy. Um, so the re one of the reasons I was reluctant was, and this is stupid. It's the dumbest reason not to use SAS, okay? Let me just say that. So I, this is the way I would write my my CSS, and I was very particular about where the closing bracket was. I liked it underneath, uh, two, two, uh, two spaces in, right? I know, I know, it's ridiculous, it's stupid. Uh, what was I thinking? Uh, and if I got really, I was really, I cared about the formatting of the CSS. Like I was really obsessed with it. I even put like a, an ASCII beer at the end of all my files, because um, I figured beer would be at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the day. So SAS at the time, and this doesn't matter, but I'm just sharing this because, uh, you know, would have it, it, they would have the, uh, the bracket, closing brackets toward the flush on the end, or, you know, in one of the output styles anyway. Um, and it just bothered me. And uh, that was one of the things that bothered me, which is ridiculous in hindsight. But I think it's because, one of the reasons, is because I, I learned everything by, by viewing source, right? That's how I learned... Uh, everything. Um, and the care that people took into their formatting mattered to me, and it made it easier for me to learn from their code. Now, obviously, that doesn't matter as much now, uh, because we have, you know, Web Inspector and other tools. So the, the actual formatting doesn't matter. So that's, that was a really bad uh, reason not to, to, to use SAS. But the other reason, too, was that you know, and I'd get into arguments with, with Rich, the developer for Dribbble, about the fact that CSS wasn't, wasn't powerful enough. 
And I think it was designed, and this is, this is a quote from Bert Boss, one of the original authors. It was designed so that it was easy to understand for beginners and so that a lot of people would use this. Um, and I, I took that to heart. So there's this balance between being, something being powerful enough and overly complex with any technology. And I feel like, you know, some of the, some of the reasons why CSS doesn't have X, Y, and Z, I think is because of that, right? So anyway, I, I ended up relenting on SAS and, and started using it. A friend of mine said, hey, just change your file name to .scss, and then, and I'm, and then you're using SAS, because it, it, it's, uh, it, everything's compatible that way. And I said, okay, well, we're done. Um, I'm a SAS user now. Welcome. Um, and, and, and that, so, and then, but the nice thing is, is that with SAS, and a lot of you use it, so you understand this, you, with SAS, you don't have to learn everything at once. You can iteratively add things as you go. And you can literally change your existing file, just like I did there, and then add things as you go. So we would add, you know, first we added variables for, for things. That was, that was made sense to me. I mean, for CSS3 stuff with, um, you know, the things with prefixes, it made it, it was a no-brainer to use this. Um, and for, you know, nested inline media queries, like I can't imagine doing responsive design without, without this now, you know, now that I've used it. Um, and so I ended up using it, and then I ended up writing a book about it, which is, which is c completely weird, right? And actually, there's a French version of the book, which is, which is pretty cool. I think, I think that's the French version. The, the, uh, I can't quite read the title, but, um, but this also, like, so I'm telling you this because my reaction to SAS was, was silly, and, uh, and I, I'm trying to use, I'm trying to remember how that went and use that to other, other things that I react to, like, no, I don't want to do that. That's, like, Atomic Styles is a good, is a good point. I mean, someone at, at Dribble brought uh, this in and started using it, and I was immediately like, what are all these, cla these class names are terrible. What does MV20 mean, you know? Um, and then come to find out, I, I learn more about it, and I said, wow, that's really helpful. <laughs> you know, uh, to, uh, to a way for the whole team to quickly build prototypes, for instance. Um, so I'm trying to keep an op a more of an open mind um, with anything that, that CSS that comes along. Ultimately, I wanna, I wanna write less code, and I think anything that helps me do that, I'm into. So, I mean, to wrap up, this is kind of, these are the, the things that I hope you take away from my ramble about history from an old guy up here. But, you know, definitely share what you're learning. Um, as you're learning it, you don't need to be an expert. It'll open doors. It'll help you codify what it is you're learning too by teaching it. Share that. Uh, try not to get overwhelmed. I know I am overwhelmed by the speed at which is, things are moving. Uh, it's okay because everything's temporary. It's gonna go away anyway at some point. Uh, not to be depressed, trip to, uh, get depressing here for a minute, but uh, and I, mean, I mean that in a good way, in that, uh, you know, things that we stress out about, we shouldn't. I'm actually, this is like a therapy session for me, I even realize. <laughs> I'm just trying to convince myself everything's gonna be okay. Uh, and this reminds me, and a little shameless plug for, for adventure, it's a, it's a pin that we, I designed for adventure. Everything is stardust, and stardust is everything. And that's kind of the, the, uh, the point I'm trying to make, is that, you know, it's gonna go away at, one, at some point, so have fun building what you build now. And thank you very much Thanks for listening.